Plants are not only capable of releasing pleasant or unpleasant odors, they can smell them too. How can plants perceive the chemical molecules that are sent to them? This is the key question entomologist Consuela de Moraes has been asking. Her speciality? Cuscuda, a vampire plant that particularly parasites tomato plants. They have a very small seed, and they only have the resources that are on those seeds to grow and find a host plant. So once they emerge from the ground, if they don't find a host, they will die. What we found is that uh, plants perceive the odors of other plants. And what we believe it's happening is that they have receptors. I think from the tomato plant, it's just a byproduct of their physiology and, and attracting the, the cascuda is just happening. Like we are producing a smell that attracts mosquitoes that we're not intended to do it, but we're doing it. Every human being has a specific odor. Plants do too. The electron microscope unveils the odorous glands of the tomato plant leaf. Numerous on the leaves of tomato or cannabis plants, they liberate intense odors. Each plant has a specific olfactory signature expressed by the morphology of its odorous glands. And the powerful perfume of lavender is explained by its large olfactory pockets. The electron microscope reveals countless release glands, but plants also have many invisible receptors. They have, an, a, a, I mean, in my view, an incredible sense. They really can sniff. And one thing that we were amazed to see is that the cascuda have this ability also to perceive, you know, a healthy plant versus a sick plant. I think it's possible that it is um, some of the, the receptors that we see in animal system, insect systems, um, could be some similarities. I mean, not the same, but I think it's possible that there are some similarities. Unfortunately, our sense of smell is of no use to decrypt the chemical messages sent by plants. We are unable to crack their code. But scientists are never defeated. Everything we know about this has been studied in the laboratory. It's extremely difficult to get a picture of that rainbow of chemical words in the field because we really don't have the instruments necessary to collect and analyze them. If we are to master the invisible conversations of plant life, we will have to learn to translate their chemical vocabulary into words. The device we're devising is, uh, is rather like a translator. It takes the language of the plant, which is all odors, and turns it into something we can see, hear, or feel. Uh, so that the plant can tell us or report to us what's happening to it. A key word that often appears in the plant language is methyl jasminate, a molecule that harbors the smell of the jasmine flower. Highly appreciated by humans, it is frequently used in the perfume industry. Almost all plants emit some methyl jasminate when they're attacked by insects. 
So that appears to be a word that occurs in all languages. Uh, but the devil is in the details. All the other molecules mixed in with it can differ from plant to plant. And that's where the language gets complicated. Plants have a slower life rhythm than humans. Some are capable of living several thousand years, but they cannot run away from danger. In response, they have developed remarkable ways to detect problems or swiftly react to the aggression of an insect. It's a question of survival. If we uh, count the number of protein receptors plants have for smelling and tasting their environment, they have many, many, many more than a human does. Even a simple plant has at least 600 different kinds of receptors for detecting odors and tastes in the environment. In contrast, humans have fewer than 20. Plants are furnished with a multitude of strange stalks and hairs that serve as receptors and protection against insects. Their vast diversity is the secret to evolutionary adaptation against the many threats. In order to compensate our lack of sensory receptors, Jack Schultz is working on a prototype of an artificial nose, a highly sensitive plaque that he hopes will enable us to improve our comprehension of the chemical conversations of plants. Well, we created this chip or this, this sensing device to be able to ask plants what they're saying outdoors in open air for the first time. Everything we know about how plants communicate is based on work done in laboratories under glassware. Uh, no one has yet isolated and measured and mapped those signals and those conversations outdoors. And we plan to be the first people to do that with this device. The interaction between insects and plants we describe as a war all the time, and that war is chemical. And those chemicals are invisible. So it's very true to say that there is chemical warfare and invisible communication going on all around us all the time. If plants have so many receptors, are they conscious that the person taking care of them is their best friend? Can the plants in the home recognize you? I suppose they might, but uh, certainly they are cap plants in your home are capable of identifying your odor. Plants are capable of smelling our odors, but can they hear us? Plants are, it seems, receptive to music. The first experiments, held 40 years ago, said that plants were sensitive to classical music, but did not like artificial or electronic music, like rock or blues. In the heart of Tuscany in Italy, a rather surprising scientific experiment has been undertaken by Dr. Stefano Mancuso over the past seven years. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the music of Mozart is played to the vines. What we saw immediately after uh, some few weeks of uh, times was that the plants with the music were much bigger and much productive. But at that time, we didn't know if it was just the effect of music or the effect of soils or the climate or whatever. And so we decided to move on a larger scale experiment 
moving from just one loudspeaker to 80 speakers in a single vineyard. Dr. Mancuso has revealed some rather surprising results. The number of insect attacks was really uh, dramatically decreasing uh, until almost nothing, almost zero. The sounds were uh, was able to make a kind of confusion in uh, the insects during the mating process. So they were unable to, to find the, the mate and so they were unable to reproduce. After several years spent playing Mozart to the vineyard, Stefano Mancuso is formal. The grapes on those land areas ripen 10 to 15 days before normal harvest dates. Plants are highly sensitive to sound, but just how do they hear them? Plants have no ears, but um, the plants are completely covered by uh, mechanosensitive channels, I would say small sensors that are activated by, by vibrations. Plants are probably much more um, sensitive than us in detecting sounds. An in-depth examination by electron microscope reveals that the leaves and the tendrils of the vines are covered by sensors that could well be their ears. Stefano Mancuso has discovered which frequencies the vines appreciate the most and subtly inserted them in Mozart's orchestrations. We found that there are a range of frequencies in the in the low in the low part of the spectrum, uh, around 100 between 100 and 1,000 hertz. There are many frequencies that we uh, we could say uh, plants like. But just what good does it do to the plant to detect such sound vibrations? We are not sure uh, about uh, what, what uh, actually the plants do with this information, but uh, we are um, quite sure that plants are able to use the information coming from the sounds in the soil, for example, to detect the quality of the soils, the amount of water in the soils, the presence of obstacles in the soils. So they are uh, in, in some way using uh, uh, information coming from uh, sounds for, to have an idea of the space around them. <laughs> 